there's something you should probably know about us by now is that we love food. We love trying different types of food and we love making content about food. Ah. But overall, we do not eat consciously. We just eat and eat and eat with the sole purpose of satisfying our taste buds and just getting food. But with great eating comes great responsibility. So we decided that it's probably time to take a closer look at our diet. I've been a pescatarian for the past seven years, so I don't eat meat or chicken, but I also don't eat enough veggies or fish, and instead I found myself eating more and more processed foods. Also, lately having to clean the fish and seeing all the blood and guts it has really pushed me to become fully vegan. I love meat. I grew up eating meat and I never questioned it. I'm from the Middle East, so quitting meat means quitting most of our amazing cuisine. What the hell is this? Also, hello, burgers. But the truth is, I've never seen meat outside of supermarket packaging. <laughs> Did you know that in the US, more than six million animals per hour are killed for human consumption? That's crazy. Then why do I eat meat? <laughs> Having said all that, I really don't believe I could live a fulfilling life without this. There's so much information online about how to go plant-based and so many different opinions. We can't do this alone. I'm so lucky to have my friend Sada in town. She's an expert in plant-based nutrition. I love her food. Every time I like browse her Instagram, I'm so excited with all these colors. Hi, my name is Sarah. I'm a chef and holistic nutritionist based in Paris. I specialize in plant-based nutrition, which is really about eating whole, natural, real foods. So fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, grains, legumes, and of Avoiding industrialized products and also minimizing your animal-based products. And it's also all about preventing diseases rather than reacting to them once they've already arised. Today we're going to be making a green Thai curry with some brown rice, energy balls with matcha, a banana bread, and a delicious smoothie bowl. So let's do this! Okay, we're ready I guess! Help me peel these babies. We're gonna be using five bananas, mush it up with a fork. We're gonna be adding almond butter as maple syrup. Gonna put a little bit of apple cider vinegar as what? well. What? Why? Just a teaspoon. <laughs> It'll help with the texture and also it's great for that gut health. A little bit of vanilla as well. A little touch of cinnamon. You're working that arm, huh? Yeah, Manal, what are you doing? One and a half cups of oats and a pinch of salt. So I did a little egg substitute here. That's two tablespoons of chia seeds with five tablespoons of water. Chia seeds are a very rich plant-based source of protein, like peanut butter, like legumes, like lentils, chickpeas, hemp seeds, tahini, tofu. You can really get the protein that you need on a plant-based diet. I just added a little bit of coconut milk. You can add almond milk, either is fine. Add a little bit of baking powder. Perfect. That's it. And then all you need is a mold, a little bit of parchment paper. Pour that baby right on top. Honestly, that was super easy to make. This will give you about 10 slices and it'll last a week for a whole week. I love it. Sprinkle brown sugar so that it's nice and caramelized. Okay. Guys, this is so beautiful. Pop it in the oven, let it bake for about half an hour. So, mm. will you be making this for breakfast? Mm -hmm. Frozen bananas, frozen berries, a little bit of coconut milk, and some maca powder. What are the benefits of maca powder? Maca is a root that is found in Peru. It's actually known to help reduce depression, stress. It really increases your energy. It will also stimulate your libido. Mm. And we're gonna add a little bit of berries. Also our coconut milk, and we're just gonna blend it. Top it off with any fresh fruits, some chia seeds, a little bit of peanut butter. Thank you. Less than 15 minutes. Yeah, it's super yeah. quick. Yeah, when I want to take a little bit of everything. All right. Mm. How is it? Mm. It's great just as a quick to go snack mm -hmm. in the afternoon when you're a little sluggish or before a workout. We're gonna be using medjool dates. We've removed the seeds. Add those with a little bit of pumpkin seed to our food processor. Pumpkin seeds are great to support your digestive system. They are rich in omega-3s mm -hmm. and six uh, fatty acids, which are essential that our body actually can't make. We're gonna also add some matcha powder, the Japanese green tea. It allows you to focus without having that crash later that sometimes you might get with yes. caffeine with coffee. coffee. Yeah. And we're also gonna add a little bit of coconut oil for that coconutty taste. A little bit of chia seeds as well. That's it, we're just gonna blend this up. 
So we're gonna put some gloves on yeah. here. This makes me feel like telling someone to bend over. Yeah. Just grab it and roll it up into a ball. And it smells like matcha, mm. doesn't it? Mm. You could substitute the matcha for raw cacao. To have a chocolate energy ball. You can also add peanut butter. So have oh. a peanut butter chocolate energy ball. The possibilities are endless. Oh, look at this plate. Do you want to like take a picture of it? We're doing now a green Thai curry, but you could do a yellow Indian mm. curry or a red Thai curry, changing the sauces as you go like that. Yes. It stays interesting. But we're gonna have brown rice for those healthy grains, but you could use soba noodles, rice noodles, polenta. Mm. So change it up, right? Okay. We're gonna take the olive oil. Look how little of olive oil she uses. You just need a little bit to sweat the onion, okay. the garlic, and the vegetables. Okay. We're gonna add first the carrots, just because they take a little longer to cook. Add a very generous teaspoon of Thai green curry paste. Now let the ingredients absorb the aromas of the taste. Add coconut milk, enough to cover the vegetables to the level. Let this cook a little bit, but if you want that little crunch, I'd say 10 minutes is enough. And we'll add the mushrooms also. Our green Thai curry is ready. It smells amazing. amazing. Are you ready to make this delicious Buddha bowl? Yeah. Word. I feel like when you hear the word curry, you feel already intimidated. You know, and this was so simple. These are baked parsnip chips that were baked in the oven for about half an hour with a little bit of rosemary, cayenne pepper, and some thyme. I had no idea what parsnips were before you told us to get the ingredients. They have a nice earthy flavor to them. I'm also gonna add a little bit of sweet potatoes that we baked in the oven whole for about an hour. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of chickpeas for that plant-based protein. A little bit of sprouts. We always want those fresh greens. Just looking at this plate, I really don't need any meat. You're not restricting, right? You're still eating very rich foods very flavorful. One thing that you can also add is a tahini drizzle to add a little bit of creaminess and some more richness to the dish. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you're definitely going more excited. These colors are beautiful. Do like little substitutions here and there and you yeah. have everything that you need for 30 days. It's gonna be easy, I promise. You're gonna love it. first two weeks is all about prepping you know you gotta prep yourself before you wreck yourself because if you don't prep you get desperately hungry and then you eat anything if you're not the organized type of person that spends time in the kitchen this is gonna be irritating you have to spend time and energy feeding yourself. Having to say no to cheese was really hard because let's face it, there's nothing more disgusting than vegan cheese. Even though technically milk is cow pus, you would expect that to be more disgusting, but no, nope, that's how disgusting vegan cheese is. My advice would be that at the very beginning, don't be so strict with yourself. Just slowly and slowly start eliminating products from your diet. We were so strict at the beginning with what we wanted to eat that we ended up skipping some meals. And I think that's even worse than just eating something else. In terms of meal prep, if you cook on Sunday, let's say you cook two meals, you have that for half the week. And then in the middle of the week, you cook another two meals and you have that for the rest of the week. So basically you're cooking twice a week. I think we spend almost the same amount of money, if not a little bit less. We eat a lot out, so we try to reduce that and we cook at home. So I do think that we ended up saving some money. I'll pay 14 bucks for a basic salad at a restaurant, but I can do it for myself here for like less than six bucks. There are things that definitely bring up the bill like superfoods, it's great if you can get them, but I don't think they're super necessary, you know? And you can get protein out of so many cheap things. At this point, our cooking skills are way better. I'm not a chef or anything, but I am no longer intimidated in the kitchen. We were more in our element in terms of cooking and planning. What's cool about going plant-based is that I'm now open to all these new flavors that I didn't know before. So now I'm like, hmm, I wonder what I can do with chickpeas. I didn't end up completely restricting myself from fish. When we were eating out and the vegan options were like really lame and the fish option was healthy, I would choose that because I didn't want end up eating something that will not satisfy me and that will make me hungry later on. I am amazed at the fact that I've completely stopped eating beef, chicken, and pork. Wow, my nan totally surprised me. I never thought that that could happen. I have seen this woman eating so many steaks and I even eat through her. So now I need to see another person eating meat, which is sad. It hurts my soul that I will never have Middle Eastern dishes like kebbeneye, like shawarma. But you know what I decide to do without them? 
and enjoy vegan recipes from all around the world. The only thing that I'll cheat with sometimes is fish and dairy. We did consistently try our best to eat our best. Kudos to us for that because we were really mindful in terms of what we we're eating. In conclusion, I would highly recommend a plant-based diet to anyone at any age. It just makes more sense for me. Eating what the earth naturally has to offer, eliminating foods that were processed by someone else at some industrial plant somewhere. Enough with the ingredients that we can't pronounce, like sodium nitrite and sodium dioxide and what for? For longer shelf life? No, thank you. I choose whole and fresh. I used to think that, oh yeah, I'm vegetarian. I'm, I supposedly eat better, but I actually, if I look at my diet, I was eating a lot of processed food. I don't think that I can fully be a vegan because I love cheese too much. And really, life is too short for passing on a cake. But I can definitely eat better and choose better. Mm -hmm.